keep on the good work, guys. Got a $50 donation from Nim1. Congratulations, Joran, on your birthday. And they asked me to attempt it in Swedish. I'll do my best. Gratis, Joran, from Martin and Christina. We've got a $5 donation from Pingu that says they picked up this game and got to the scale before, in, before getting infuriated. Maybe if I watch close enough, I can learn a trick or two. Hopefully you'll learn something there, Pingu. We've got a $10 donation from Kuma. It says, I work at 5 a.m. This donation is dedicated to all the sleepy people working, running, and watching AGDQ right now. $10 donation from the Ronin Mugen, who says, was super excited to see Fury being run, one of my favorite games of 2016. Keep up the good work, everyone. My donation goes to the Dark, Soul th Dark Souls 3 Prince Glitch Exhibit. Good more Dark Souls is always a good thing. Got uh, some good donation incentives, speaking of. Coming up, we've got uh, the file name for the Minish Cap. Uh, Navi is currently in the lead, but still time to get your donations in for that. We've got the Dark Souls 3 Prince's Glitch exhibition that was just mentioned there. That's still got a good ways to get before it is met and shown on stream. So if you want to see that on, uh, on the marathon here, make sure you get your donations in. Uh, Dark Souls 3 also has a uh, incentive for naming the character. Mammy Nova is currently in the lead with Robbie Rotten in number two slot there, and the champ is number three. So if you'd like to see uh, the name of the character be something exciting, get your donations in for that as well. Some more donations. We've got a $10 anonymous donation that says, Fury is a total blast to play, and I stayed up all night just to watch this run. This game's going to need some putting back together when studio's through with it. Agreed. Got a $20 donation from Dog. It says, I never knew about these games. Thank you, Studio, for showing them to me. Definitely getting these games ASAP. Some great indie titles out there, for sure. $75 donation from Soupy Twist that says, I waited for a long time at the end of the beat, hoping there was a way you could end the fight without killing her. After about 10 minutes, I gave up and broke my heart and her face. Got a $20 donation from Gildenstern, who says, oh, I should really be asleep, but I really want to show Fury some love and see someone make it look easy. In the spirit of Fury, kill the animals and everything else. A $100 donation from Moo88 says, Every semester, you guys keep me distracted from learning for my finals, and I love it. Donation goes to Announcer's Choice. Greetings from Switzerland. I think we'll put that towards uh, naming the Minish Cap file name Hobo. $10 donation from Ori, Re uh, excuse me, Ori Ryu. Annual donation in memory of my Uncle Marlo, whose love of the Command and Conquer series sparked my lifelong interest in gaming. Gentle reminder to everyone, get yourself screened. Talk to your doctor about your family history. Have fun. We have a $75 donation from Jimmels that says, cancer has taken away far too many good people. So if there's a chance that we can not only cure cancer, but prevent it from happening in the first place, then let's do it. Keep up the amazing work, GDQ. You're an inspiration to us all, each and every one of you. Now let's get hyped for preventing the animals and killing cancer. Uh, wait, did that come out right? Some of our sponsors here at Games Done Quick. 
include Tiny Build. They're an indie label, started about five years ago. They're currently working on a game called Hello Neighbor, which is a stealth horror game with advanced AI. They work with indie teams around the world, and you may also know them from the cult hit competitive platformer known as Speedrunners, which I enjoy myself. Uh, another one of our sponsors is Standby, which is a newly released fast-paced platformer you can get on Steam. One dollar from every copy of the game sold goes directly to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. You can get it with a 15% launch discount right now. One more donation here. It says, uh, just simply, thank you for this event, Heart. Five dollars from more 47. And we are ready with the next run. We've got Flyer Wrench with Killing Pepsi versus Sup Nerds. Take it off. All right, awesome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Flyer Wrench. Uh, I guess we'll start with some introductions. So I'm Sup Nerds. I'm Killing Pepsi. I'm in italics. Okay, so are we good to start? <laughs> okay, I'll give a countdown, I guess. Three, nice. two, one, go. So this is FlyWrench. It's a precision platform of sorts. It's hard to explain, so I'm just going to offload that to uh, Italics, who is not playing at the moment, so he can do a better job of commentating. All right, so this is a precision anti-platformer, is what we call it, because you want to stay as much off of the ground as much as possible. Um, each of these levels, uh, you're this white line in the middle of the screen that's constantly being pulled down towards the bottom. And uh, there's some ways to counteract that. Uh, one of those is by a thing called flapping. And on the controller, you do that by pressing the A button. And uh, the A button will shoot, your sh will shoot your character up, straight upwards, and uh, also turn your red. Uh, there's a couple other ways that you can do that as well, by uh, holding up on the control stick. And that does a super flap. And that will basically accelerate you upwards uh, double the rate. Um, also holding down on the control stick, that does an anti-flap, which does the exact opposite. Uh, it still turns your, sh turns your character red, uh, but does not accelerate you upwards at all. Um, you may have noticed also their character is also turning green. Uh, this is uh, another thing you can do with your character, and uh, that's by pressing the X button on the controller. And this allows you to basically bounce off of yellow lines. Uh, yellow lines are the outsides of the levels here, and if you are anything but green, you will just die. You'll, you'll just explode. Um, it should be noted that turning green locks your control, so you're at the mercy of momentum and gravity. So if you want to do a bounce, you have to set up your angle beforehand. Um, and this, that's kind of the same way with uh, turning your character red as well, uh, except uh, you have a little bit more control, but not much in terms of moving back and forth with the control stick. Uh, the most movement you'll have is when you're white. Um, so pretty much what you are, your character is a spaceship, and you're flying around through space trying to get from point A to point B, uh, point B being a slowly rotating square at the end of the level. All right, so we're heading into Pluto now. And Pluto, each planet introduces a new gimmick. So Pluto's going to introduce green lines, which you have to be green to pass through, uh, which introduces another purpose for turning green other than bouncing off uh, walls and ceilings which, uh, as you've probably noticed by now, is a good way to completely reverse your momentum. So in a lot of cases where you have to turn around, uh, the quickest way to do it is to turn green and bounce off a ceiling or wall like that. And uh, since we're at the mercy of momentum, every time we hit the gate, uh, if we don't hit it directly on, it hits it around the side of the... Uh, the, it, it, the hitbox like, to get actually end the levels in the middle of the, the sprite. So if you hit it like, towards the edge of it, you kind of been around it waste about half a second. So there really isn't any RNG with this game at all. The only RNG that we would consider in this game is the hitbox for the character for the character or your spaceship. Um, it doesn't seem to be the hitbox isn't the entire spaceship. It's just a portion of it. And it changes depending on the state you're in, so there's several different types of hitboxes. Um, you'll notice in like some of the levels where you really will question the hitboxes when you clearly clip into a wall and you really you, you just didn't die or anything. Or when you hit a line, and when you die, it doesn't look like you hit the line at all. 
that's generally only for like really fast moving uh, things that won't be able to translate in the game kind of on the um, You'll see that they're really close together uh, in terms of what levels they're on. Um, honestly, that really doesn't matter with this game. Uh, what really truly matters with this game is the very end levels, which really increase in difficulty. Um, so each so each of these uh, levels are separated into planets, starting with Pluto. Uh, Pluto's a planet. Scientists lie to you, it's a planet. Um, and you'll go from planet, or from Pluto to Neptune to Uranus and so on and so forth up until Sun. Um, Sun is the ultimate final level in this game. And so we, we already discussed that uh, each planet introduces a new gimmick. And uh, upcoming next here uh, is Uranus, and Uranus introduces pink lines. Uh, pink lines act like yellow lines, except you cannot touch them at all. You'll just explode. Uh, so Uranus is where movement starts getting a bit more complex, just because you do have to navigate uh, sort of mazes or tight corridors, I guess, of pink lines. And you can't just bounce off them if you're in a pinch, like you could with yellow lines. And so each planet's going to get progressively more complex and tight with your windows for doing things. And it should be noted that what you're seeing on Earth's screen right now is at every, uh, at certain numbers of unlocked planets or uh, beaten levels in the game, you can unlock like the next planet to like kind of visit it and see what it's like. But since you have to beat every planet in the game or every level in the game to unlock the final level and actually beat the game. It's kind of uh, useless in a speedrun sense. Yeah, and annoying. And it's really annoying because the default option, if you're just mashing A, uh, is to enter the next planet, which you don't want to do. You want to continue the planet always. So you have to remember where those notifications are and know to uh, tap downwards and then start mashing A instead of mashing A right after finishing a level like you would normally do. And with the any, yeah, like what Pepsi said, the any percent, they're running any percent, which is literally just the 100% of this game. You have to beat every single level in order to unlock Sun, which is the last and final level, uh, which then leads to your, to, to the end of the game. It's not the true 100%, though. It's not the true 100%, no. Um, so we have a, we have a miscellaneous category for this uh, being all themes. And at certain points of the game, uh, if you unlock a new planet, you'll get a new skin. Uh, if you complete all the levels of a, of, a, of a planet, you'll unlock another skin. And there's a total of 20 skins for this game, and all themes is completing the game for every single theme. Literally just 20 80 percent runs in a row. So you might notice that the last 10 levels of Uranus here are the exact same level. That's because they are. It's just like the same level, maybe like rotated 90 degrees or add a few gates here and there, and it's really boring. And I always like to remind myself that uh, Uranus has 25 levels. It's way longer than you think it is. Uh, and 25 levels is the maximum amount for a planet to have. Unless you edit game files, then you can put the entire game in a planet. <laughs> right. Um. All right, while we're looping Uranus, we got a $40 donation from JM16. It says, got up at 3 a.m. just to catch the most intense game about line segments in the world. Risk it for the biscuit, boyos. <laughs> Boy, hi -o. Shout out to the Runch crew. Uh, we're a small community, but we're very dedicated. And there's a lot of cool people in there, including JM. Thanks for the donation, dude. Sure. So this is Saturn. Uh, Saturn introduces pinwheels. Um, most of the pinwheels you'll see in this game are pink. Uh, there is a couple of them that will be a different color, but most of the most of the pinwheels are pink. And the ones that you have to really look out for in this game are reverse pinwheels. It's pinwheels that go in the opposite direction of where you need to go. Um, yeah, reverse pinwheels are pretty spooky. You'll see in later levels where you can kind of clip into a wall to try to avoid a reverse pinwheel just to skip the rest of the level. Uh, but pretty much all of this level, all of the all of this planet is uh, is a bunch of auto scrollers. You have to wait for these pinwheels to finish going, and the fastest that you can finish these levels is just by one cycling these levels. Yeah. Later on, you'll see the game do much more complex stuff with pinwheels, so you have a lot of cycle skips and stuff that you can make. But this is just an introduction level to them, so it's fairly auto scrollery. 
so we could probably do donations if we want to. We got a $15 donation from Breaky that says it's 5 something a.m. here, but I can't wait to see these runners fly through this game at gut wrenching speed. Huh? <laughs> nice. <laughs> donation goes to Sup Nerd's Choice. Hope the arcade machines haven't eaten all your quarters. You can still come home to Canada. Well, the arcade machines are on free play. Uh, <laughs> so, no. Um, save the animals. Nice choice. Thanks, dude. Get a $75 donation from Gravelite. It says, I love you guys at AGDQ. Here's to beating cancer, and can I get some Kappa Ross in chat? P.S. Save the frames, kill the animals. All right, so we're starting to approach the end of Saturn. I'm on the fourth to last level. There's a cheeky little cycle skip there. Normally, you're supposed to go the other way around that pinwheel, but you can just uh, go through it. It's a bit tight in the timing, but you get muscle memory. And there's another cycle skip coming up on this level, if I can pull it off. Uh, yep. I was supposed to bounce off the ceiling, but uh, I still made it anyways. And finally, one last cycle skip in Saturn. Boom. So I'm going to be heading into Jupiter now, and Jupiter's gimmick is gravity. And so they have these orange gravity fields, which around double gravity, I don't know quite how much it is. Uh, it's around double. It's close enough. Uh, this is a really awkward planet for a first playthrough, just because you're getting used to sort of the rate which you need to flap to stay aloft, uh, just with normal gravity, and now they double it. Uh, and that gets a, takes a while to really get used to. But you play the game enough and you start, they just blend into the background, because you get muscle memory for both types of gravity. Yeah, this level also introduces a third. It's very common to get a particularly fun glitch uh, called the reverse bounce, where if you're going at a wall, like at a uh, generally I'd acute I'd diagonal <laughs> angle, generally, you will bounce back the w exactly the way you came at exactly the same speed, which usually results in death. It, it will result in death pretty much every time. Just went to scratch my eyelid and then I accidentally pressed B and quit the level. Nice. Nice, nah, it's pretty good. A little bit of a menuing error. <laughs> if you want to call it that. Um, we normally, we use in game time for this. Um, so menuing isn't really much of, an, uh, much of a problem. Time is only counting while you're actively moving inside of a, uh, inside of a level. If you're in a menu or anything, time is stopped. Um, but it, it's just annoying from an RTA perspective that you missed, a, you missed menuing. Yeah, both timing methods uh, in game time and RTA are kind of flawed just because there's so much variation in how this game runs, depending on your PC. And it has nothing to do with power, even. You can get like a really, really solid PC and it can't run it, and then you get some really bad laptop and it'll like run it perfectly. So that's kind of sucks for RTA. And then in game time has various errors. Uh, so you're basically taking the lesser of two evils. Yeah, so you'll notice that. Uh, Nerds and Pepsi have different uh, graphics options turned on right now. Uh, Pepsi has a trail that's tra uh, trailing behind him. Um, that's just with the graphics quality on high. Uh, the background also looks kind of funky as well. It's changing shades of the background color. It's HD. It's HD. It messes with my head. I can't play on high graphics settings. <laughs> There's too much going on. All right. Finishing Jupiter. And on to Mars. And Mars introduces the wonderful world of turrets. Um, this is Nerds' very favorite uh, gimmick in this game. And so the thing with turrets is uh, they are constantly tracking you no matter where you are in a level and will always shoot a bullet at you where you last, where they last saw you, not in front of you. Even if you're behind a white, uh, yellow line. And yep. with bullets, they when they hit a line, they will disappear. So you see in a lot of these levels, we'll be manipulating our position purposefully to manipulate where the turrets go. Oh, this is some cool deaths. Ooh, nice. This level's tough. Have a comeback. So yeah, you'll see them moving in certain directions. They're not going straight toward the goal most of the time, just so they can manipulate uh, the bullets there. Uh, what nerds just did there uh, was called surfing. And surfing is when your when your ship is just moving across of a colored line just by itself, and that can be rather annoying sometimes because you cannot 
move your ship off of that line until it's actually exited the line. Yeah, that level there is the only level where it's actually kind of viable. Uh, in later levels, we'll accidentally do it, maybe. And you can laugh at us if we do that. It, it locks your control, so you can't really get out of it. Yeah, and then you'll just get, like, slid into a wall or something. Um, so they're also running a normal mode in this game. There's another menuing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> menuing stuff. Um, they're running uh, on normal mode. Uh, there's two difficulties for this game. There is normal and helmet mode. Uh, helmet mode is the easier version of this game, even though sometimes it really isn't. Sometimes when we run this game. Uh, the difference with helmet and normal is on helmets, you can touch yellow lines without having to bounce off of them. So you can just sit on the bottom of the level without any danger. Um, when you also pass through lines, uh, they disappear. So when you die and then come back into respawn back into the level, the line will be gone. Yeah. And they're both even. Oh, right I just re-entered Mars. Oh man, my menuing is on point. <laughs> it's my time to shine. So they were <laughs> even. So again, they they're really close to uh, in terms of uh, place right now. But uh, again, it's really determined by Mercury. Uh, also, a thing we didn't mention with helmet mode is that on helmet mode you can clip through walls because you can sort of like get yourself stuck in a wall and then if you bounce while you're in there, it will like think you're bouncing off from the other side and just put you on the other side. Uh, but it's a really precise thing to do, so it's not fun. Um, and in, you can do it in normal mode, but it's relatively an accident. Yeah. It's not something you can plan for. Got a decent bounce. So yeah, this upcoming level here is, we, we're calling it RNG as well. This bounce is really annoying to get. It's so like specific. There's only like a few pixels where uh, you can get a perfect like straight down, straight up bounce. And so a lot of times you have to improvise and find a way to save yourself. Try to get a fast setup is really hard to do. You can't really do it fast. Yeah, you could spend like 10 seconds setting it up perfectly and get a perfect bounce every time, but there's obvious reasons why you don't want to do that. So they're on Earth right now. Earth introduces switches. Uh, switches are these blue lines, or blue lines and blue circles. Uh, the Nerds is on is attempting to do a skip on this level. Dude, cool. With this with this reverse pinwheel by hugging the right hand side of the wall there we and go. just mashing A button really hard up into the end of the level. Um, with switches, uh, you have to hit the blue uh, circle in order to make blue lines disappear. Uh, blue lines behave exactly like pink lines. You can't touch them at all. Um, and with switches, uh, the blue lines will disappear for probably about three seconds uh, before they return again. Yeah, so uh, in some of the levels later on, you'll see levels designed around the fact that the blue lines reappear. So you have to sort of speed your way uh, to the uh, blue gate. And I did it again. <laughs> That's the last time I can do it, so we're good. Um, there's one level in Mercury, for example, that you really have to really haul yourself to the end. Uh, and that level gives a lot of casual players trouble just because they're not used to having to go that fast. And you can see uh, there's also some levels in Mercury where they have chains of switches. And then there's strats where you can skip certain switches if you go fast enough. And you'll see that later on. So Killing Pepsi's moved on to Venus. Uh, Venus introduces moving lines. And that is pretty much all of the new gimmicks that are in this game. Um, Mercury, well, if you want to make it a gimmick, Mercury introduces hard levels. Yeah, so global achievement stats, uh, just to give a picture of how hard Mercury is, I think 33% of people beat Venus, and then only around 10% of people beat Mercury. So there's a big drop off, a lot of people just get to Mercury and decide, uh, I don't want to do this. They're making it look easy, but really when you're playing through this game the very first time, it's not very easy at all. <laughs> well, it takes a long time to get used to the movement because it's very different from like platformers or other types of games. Yeah, very, well, yeah your spaceship kind of Ironically floats. enough, it's very floaty. <laughs> uh, it floats back and forth and it really, it when you let go of the control stick, it doesn't immediately reduce speed. It's uh, it decelerates pretty slowly. And Nerds is doing... Nope. Nope. So there's a skip that you can do there that you can beat the pink line before it comes back up. 
Uh, it looked like Pepsi got it there on this first try. No, it's not too tough, push. but uh, sometimes it just doesn't go your way and you have to go back around. Path of shame. You can go ahead and read some more donations if we have any. Sure thing. Got a $75 donation from bbean222. Says, I love GDQ. I got into it last summer with SKDQ watching through Twitch. In October, I decided I need to be at the next event. So here I am, having a blast. Keep the games coming, doing a great job. All runners, keep it up. And don't forget to save the animals. Check out this cool auto scroller. Oh my god, I died on the auto scroller. <laughs> I blew it. That's the first time in a while I've done that. It's not hard. So if you're on helmet mode, you can actually skip that auto scroller by uh, glitching yourself out of the level. It's stupid. I, I don't recommend trying it. I wanted to prove it was possible, so I spent two hours doing it once. And then I got it once. And then that was it? Yeah, and then I never tried it again because it's <laughs> dumb. Ooh, wow, cool. That's not the color you're supposed to be. Yeah, helmet mode is not necessarily a run, or is a necessarily a thing that we run. It would be a cool thing to test, but uh, that's not a thing that happens because Game Maker Studio doesn't work with Hourglass. It's a shame. So they're approaching the final levels of Venus here. And I like to stress that these guys are making it look easy. These levels are not easy. And when we get into Mercury here, you may kind of see that it just looks like a bunch of colored lines to you, but that's basically what it is. I've played Fly Wrench by itself. It is very challenging. Yes, it is. <laughs> no death on the first level. Nice. The first. Always a plus. So you're going to see levels in Mercury. They get pretty lengthy, which I actually really like because a lot of the earlier levels you can sort of fluke into beating, but Mercury, you really have to know what you're doing. But it's very daunting to play, and it's very uh, exhausting to play. You really have to put your heart into it. So Pepsi is coming up to a ski slope here. There's a skip that you can do if you're fast enough. Oh, ah, one more try. That she did do. Nice, dude. All right, give my best shot. Nope. We're doing it normally. So the game intends you to go around the level instead of going straight back up again. See, now, yeah, I did that purposefully so you could see what you were supposed to do instead of what Pepsi did. Yeah, it used to be like one of those fable skips. Like it, it, me and Nerds have only done it once each, but unbuffered until we found. Like, yeah, shout out to uh, Hambino. He found a really good uh, strat for it. It's not perfect, but it's better. Yeah, he also found the world record. Uh, shout out to the Slick Rick, which is the level Pepsi's on right now. It's really choke heavy because there's so many different ways you can die on it. Yeah, those turrets at the bottom of that level, you have to bait their bullets before actually dropping down into that level, otherwise you're, you're dead. Will he be kind? Will Rick be kind? Or will he be slick? Oh, he's kind. Nice. He's got the fast cycle too. a $5 donation from Limington that says, sup, sup, good luck with this evil game. I believe in you. You can go zoomy speed. Dude, thanks to that. Ooh, this is a... Ooh, wow. Oh, no. That level's easy. It's very easy to just, like, mess up your muscle memory and start doing stupid things over and over again, unlike some of the easier levels. So we got this level that Pepsi's on right now. It's called Rats. It is a giant spiral with a pink pinwheel that's following you around. So you have to do this pretty good, and there you go. It's way harder that's, than it looks. It's This level that Rats is pretty hard to do. All right, should I do it? One of the hardest levels in the game. Should I do it? I'm doing it. First try. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be attempting a really hard skip right here. Uh, so let's see how it goes. It can save nine seconds if I do it. Take an easy way out. 
Got him. There you go. <laughs> so as you can see with Pepsi, you're supposed to go around the other way, uh, which is very slow. That's for the folks at home. So there's another skip that you can do here. Yeah, let's see how it goes. It's been very mean to me lately. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Pepsi gets it on his first try, and he does. Oh man. The game intends you. The game intends you to go back around. Uh, Don't worry. What? Okay, that was nice. <laughs> Good one. There's another pinwheel that you're supposed to follow around to hit another hit another switch to go straight back up into the end of the level. Each of those saves about six, seven seconds, but wastes ten seconds if you die trying to do them. So, yeah, do what you're on a risk. It's a small skip that you can do here instead of hitting the blue switch there. Yeah, it's very easy. I too much height. It's hard to like go so slow that you can't skip that last switch. I'm gonna play it safe there. I could have gone for that cycle, but uh, it's spooky. So we're both heading into the last level of Mercury right now, which isn't actually that tough. It's kind of claustrophobic, though. Pepsi's finished Mercury as well as Nerds. All right, let's see how Sun goes. So there's a small skip that there's a skip that you can do here at the beginning of Sun. Um, that saves some time, definitely. Uh, time is coming up here uh, when they hit the end of the level for the uh, for Sun. That was oh. the tightest I've ever made Sun skip. That oh. was so close. This might be it. But nice. Oh man, that was so dumb. Oh my god. It's my turn to shine. Yep, you got a good chance here. Oh. Okay. I just missed that thing. And time. <laughs> nice time. It's pretty good, yeah. 12 yeah. 16 is a great time. It's only uh, 25 seconds behind my PB. And time for Pepsi. Sure. All right, so we have a donation incentive that got met for Pepsi to play a level called Super Pluto. So uh, we should switch to a single screen um, layout just for that. I'm going to use the best theme. So this is one of the things that you can unlock. Yeah, so the game has a level editor in it. Um, and one of the features is that you can copy planets from the actual game into level editor. So I had a brilliant idea to just make hard versions of all the levels. Uh, I've only done up to Saturn so far, but he's going to be play Pluto, which is something only silly people do. <laughs> Save us from that. I see on the high scores, there's uh, only three people who have beaten it. Myself, Governor's here, and somebody who took over two hours. I've given up on this planet. I feel bad. <laughs> All right. Are we going to use a timer for this one? Him? Are we going to use a timer for this one? Or? I don't think. Well, it has an in game timer. Good point. Yes. All right. So I'm going to be supplying some top notch developer commentary here. <laughs> All right, let's go. Oh, I got the sun music. Nice. I can't hear any music. So yeah, with the level editor in this game, um, it's not like Mario Maker where you create a level and then you have to play test it, basically beat the level before you uh, actually upload it. You can just make these levels and straight upload them. Yeah, but nobody would ever do that. I, I would never do that. I, I have too much pride and respect for uh, the people who play my levels to do that. Especially me. Yeah, especially you. Well, Pepsi's my professional play tester. This level's really hard because that central section is hard to get through. Okay. 
Ooh, great. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. I would have just gone around and done it again. Nice. Yeah. So we're getting close to the only good level on this entire planet, which is the next one. If we can get past this terrible one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for the claps. <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's gonna be a thing now. Just single claps. Oh, okay. This one is like. My yeah, you have level. to keep looping okay. in and around. It's pretty complicated. I messed up making this level. It's supposed to be hard, but I accidentally made it really easy. Uh, you're supposed to be like in the top left there, uh, chilling with those turrets and dodging, but you can just hide behind the white line. I considered oh. stealth patching it before GDQ just to see how Pepsi would react. Well, yeah, it's gonna be close enough. You can really test if your baiting of turrets here. Yeah, you have to have them shoot above you or else you uh, won't Ooh. make it through it. Okay. That's a shortcut. And luckily there's no category for this. <laughs> <There's an laughs> Shout out to reverse pinwheels. They're a very good uh, uh, mechanic. And this is a very creative level that takes a lot of skill and uh, yeah. So this really, these, this level and the next level really test um, the validity of hitboxes. Yeah, see, so you're, you're in the wall right there. You're kind of in the wall, but you're not really. Hitbox is somewhere. It's like a square or maybe like a squished rectangle. Who knows? Really tight flapping there. That level, first time through is this level's RNG. Uh, getting the getting the perfect bounce here is really tough, and then getting perfect bounce and also getting the switch is even tougher. It's just a least inconsistent level by far. Ooh, okay. That was not a good sign. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> the problem with these levels is there's no really safe strats for these levels. It's all you have to be reckless. There we go. Yeah, this is something you really Oh! oh. oh. I'm mad about that one. This is something you I'm really can't do. Uh, if you just beat Mercury, you really have to put like 50 hours into this game before you can even hope to challenge something like this. It's You have to have a full grasp of movement. Okay. And I have 200 hours in this game. I can't believe this happened. Yeah. Can you say we played this game too much? Not enough. Nah, dude, Apparently. it's the best. Yeah. After this level, it should be smooth sailing. There's Kind of the only random level, I guess. Yeah, it's bad. The setup. The random part being later in this level. Oh, <laughs> the switch closed just before he got in it. I, how did I do that? There, there we go. go. I should not have made that one alive. <laughs> All right, smooth sailing from here on out. Just speed level. So to navigate some tight quarters quickly. It's not too bad. It's not flapping right there. there go. Okay, this level is actually. Yeah, you have to get a basically perfect angle oh, on the down part there. Because you can't control yourself while you're in the nice. red line. And sometimes it locks your uh, controls. Now, this level is actually RNG. So the lines push you while you're in them. So if you have moving lines, then, like, yeah, nice first try. Or first try enough. First real try. Close enough. First try never hurts. This level has a little cheeky turret at the end there just to mess you up. So we didn't mention, this game has a really good soundtrack to it. Um, Shout out to the Magic Meat Boy ride. There it is. <laughs> this is a, yeah, it's, if 
it doesn't lock my controls after I make it to that one, if I can... Hmm. Yeah, I'll take a slow. And I can get that. If I get a cycle ahead, I can... I have less time to react to these turrets, but it saves a decent couple seconds. But it's... So do you like, do you like bullets? I, I, the turrets are the best mechanic, because you can do stuff like this. When in doubt, just like if you're designing a level, just fill it with turrets and good things will happen. <laughs> also a bunch of pinwheels. Yeah. Pinwheels are good, especially if they're going backwards. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting, as in I messed up. Yeah, this is a really tough level. Ah. Oh. I hate the bullet footage, that's annoying. Who put that there? Me. <laughs> I take full responsibility for putting Pepsi through all this. Yeah, man. This took me 46 minutes to beat my first time through. Man, there we go. This whole level. All right, this last is the level. last level here. Ooh, okay. Let's just go fast. All right, here we go. Right, time. That's time. Nice. <laughs> and a calm of relief just comes on the stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's Fly Wrench. Yep. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Yep. All righty. You're watching Awesome Games Done Quick, raising money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. BCF's one of the nation's leading voluntary health organizations, the only U.S. nonprofit focused solely on cancer prevention and early detection. They were founded about 30 years ago. They've catapulted cancer prevention to prominence, and they fulfill their mission through research, outreach, education, and advocacy across the country. For more information, you can check out their website at preventcancer.org. We've got some donations here. We've got a $5 donation from Andrew217 that says,